This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And for those of you who may have seen or may not have seen the program in the past, uh, here in the program we talk about what's happening with the military and veterans community. Uh, hopefully, it, what happens sometimes when you're doing a live program is that uh, things do happen. We had Mr. Mark McCabe, who was scheduled to uh, appear with us with the, um, he's from the Vietnam Vets Association uh, out of uh, Florida. And he came on last time and talked about a few issues that uh, our military and vets have been discussing. One of the things that we were going to discuss, and hopefully we may still have him on the program, is what's happening in the military communities as far as certain um, issues with health. And uh, one of the, was those of you who may be familiar with the um, Camp Lejeune, there were some issues about the uh, water out there and the effects on the families and um, the service members. Uh, that's still being addressed and uh, we'll bring you some more information on that. As I mentioned in the future, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be tying into some uh, individuals uh, that have some really pertinent information about what's happening again not only with the vets and the um, active duty but also how it impacts the, uh, the civilian uh, community also uh, because as we mentioned before with the uh, veterans and the military a uh, very integral part here in the state of Hawaii we have roughly about 120,000 vets give or take that um, participate in some form or fashion with the communities and uh, we're going to be talking with these individuals who are instrumental and a lot of them I call unsung heroes because they do get involved in a very uh, major way as far as trying to improve the quality of uh, the lives uh, as far as their participation in the uh, political process and also. Uh, but right now we have a guest, uh, local guest right now, Mr. Macalino, who's uh, with the Angel Network. And uh, may I call you Mac? Yes. Good. Uh, welcome to the program. And um, the Angel Network, first, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, my name is Matt. I started here back in 1994. I was hired by the founder of Angel Network Charities, Mrs. Ivy Olsen. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there that knows her out here, she's here. I'm getting this job out here, and I started serving the homeless and doing her homeless mission. Uh -huh. Uh, the, I've worked here for over 20 years. Okay. Uh, the or, the uh, group that you're with right now said the Angel Network. Uh, how extensive is that? How extensive is it? We actually serve over almost 700 people a week uh -huh. on a Thursday and Friday and last week. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Um, I know, of course, we, we talk about, uh, you know, of course, community issues also, but of course, you have a lot, do you have a lot of veterans that come through there? And what programs that may be available that, are, um, that they may not be aware of? Yes, we not only help the homeless, we help the elderly, veterans, the people around the community that are struggling and don't have to be homeless to come and get food. Mm -hmm. They can come and get dry goods from our pantry and also perishables from our refrigerators. Mm -hmm. We also have the star free telephones for anybody that's been low income and needs a telephone. We have each cap that helps out with finding jobs and also doing their resume if they need to get their resume caught up. Mm -hmm. We have also legal aid from society with people that need to get legal questions answered. That is a third agency that comes down here and also we have the Hawaii Meals on Wheels helping us how many people get their food delivered to their homes, uh -huh. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. We have the Hawaii Food Bank Service that we have there commodity senior food boxes. Anybody that's over 60 can sign up and get their boxes picked up here. Mm -hmm. We also have the Ohana drop days so three times a month. That's a truck comes and drops off the food and picks up the products. And we have about three to four hours of their delivery. They can also get extra clothes. They can get a hot shower here. They can wash a small load of clothes, dry a load of clothes. They don't pay for anything. You can come and get your hygiene here if you're homeless. They 
any kind of hygiene. Please say she needs to be a family. Right. We need to give donations to come around the area from this side. We have all the materials for the families to come and help themselves with. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, sorry. One stop shop. You're right. So I can have a very extensive um, uh, networking system out there anyhow. Uh, just to, again to tie in with the uh, veterans, uh, what organizations uh, that, that may help to support or you're con in contact with uh, U.S. vets or any other, any other groups out there that uh, you're familiar with that um, provide uh, certain services? It was the U.S. vets oh. and uh, we used to go down to uh, one of Part of the provision and help the vets out there every year. Mm -hmm. There was another outfit that came from Churchill Hospital, I'm not sure what, but it was Kaleido uh -huh. out in on the west side. Mm -hmm. okay. And help the vets. Great. Um, I know, like I so said, here with the spirit of Aloha, we have a lot of people who like to volunteer, and I know that you have get quite a few volunteers that come in who are, again, I, I keep stressing the, the military point, but um, do you have many uh, active duty people or people associated with the military to try to assist? Right now we're dealing with uh, two organizations, one deal with serving the youth. Uh -huh. and, uh, she's actually one of the sergeants in the military that comes and brings down her people. Mm -hmm. uh, once in a while when they have the time, they come in and stop in on all the job days. Um, is when we serve more than five plus Six hundred people a day. Yeah. Okay. And there's also a few other agencies I can't actually pick on their names right now, but they come in and they always talk to them. Want to know when they come? What what week can they come in? What time? Right. What day they come in and help? Okay. So uh, overall, do you have any plans for expansion as far as um, again with the volunteerism, um, or what can people do if they want to go ahead and help to? Um, you know, to support your uh, your efforts? Well, we do have a hunger, the 19th or 20th annual hunger walk that helps out all the pantries on the islands. And it's done down in town. It's coming up in September. Mm -hmm. And it's it's an agency thing that everybody, the Hawaii Food Bank puts on for a free, free day of food, entertainment, and a walk, a one mile walk around. Yeah. To town and back on the grass area. Yeah. It just adds to your thing, your thing as an agency, and that's for us to um, yeah. try to collect some money so we can put it back into the agency mm -hmm. to buy food. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's also Thanksgiving. Um, anyone out there that don't have a place to come and eat or don't have a family to go to, you're always welcome to come to Calgary by the Sea Lutheran Church here in Ina Ina. That's where I serve the turkey. Turkey lunch when it's more like a dinner. We serve we serve in Luau style, and I have entertainment for the people out here. We set up tents and chairs for anybody that's in need of a hot meal or something to come to the fellowship mm -hmm. on Thanksgiving Day every year. Right. Okay. I know that. Um you mentioned there's the history of the uh, we are at the location we're at right now. Again, you know, I've met, I've met so many fabulous people over here, and like I say, a lot of times local history is lost. But could you tell us a little bit more about how the operation out there got set up? And I understand there was um, um, a couple that uh, donated their home to help establish this, um, this entity? The angel that was started off back in the 80s before I got here, Miss um, oh. Ivy Olson and um, Kalu Doug Olson, mm -hmm. which he was the head pastor here at this church, in the Lutheran Church in Aina Aina. Mm -hmm. And they lived in the perishable home right here where we work out of her house. Mm -hmm. And um, she basically took all the homeless people in, sheltered them, told them until they could get on their feet, and then nurtured them until they got their jobs and let them go. But this place was a stepping stone place where she just picked up everybody's house here inside of this church area. And then on to her home in Hawaii guy. Right. Okay. Uh, is she still with us or did she pass? We put her down and she's uh, resting in peace. 2002, she's out in the ocean swimming with her fishes. Uh -huh. With her husband, which went down a year or two years later, Kabu Doug went down also. Uh -huh. They have a legacy of this place and everyone knows this place from right. uh, 
huge thrift shop on the, on the store, uh-huh. which it used to be, where we got it all out just to have food. Yeah. Okay. I know when we initially talked, anyhow, like, I, you seem to be a very humble and dedicated individual. And I know a lot of, I know that, you know, I'm quite sure you don't believe that, you know, what we're talking about, like I said, is about you. But could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Because it seems like you've been very, you've been dedicated for the past 20 years to helping out. Is there, what are some of the things that you would like to see or that um, is on the horizon for yourself and for the organization? Well, for one, finish up my um, substance abuse class so that I can get out into the community and maybe into the prison facility and help the young gentlemen and women out there that still suffer from the, the disease out there and teach them how to, they can get a second chance in life and get their life on the outside. Mm-hmm. I come from a blood class that I haven't. Not a, not a thing to talk about because today I can reach out to people and know how to approach these people to want to get the help that they need because it's a one-stop shop right out here most times people come out of incarceration they will be tell them nothing to hang on once they get released and go to the revolving door mm-hmm. this church gives you a lot of avenues to pick yourself up you get not paid for it do your volunteer work and in return you get you get gifts from god that mm-hmm. actually you probably end up working yeah so you have a place to live Right. And there's so much, so much that um, I've learned from this place. Mm-hmm. It took me 23 years being an addict and now being a solo. Mm-hmm. I'm also running halfway houses with Oxford houses already, yeah. which is worldwide also. Oh, okay. And so I to help all of the inmates that's come in and out of the revolving doors and into homes that we have about 35 to 30 houses on the island for mm-hmm. women and children. Yeah. They need some place to stay when they come out. Right. They're all structured their Okay. Right. Uh, a lot of times people dwell on the negative, but as far as with the younger people, do you see more of a uh, influx or more of an interest, like say from the younger people who are really trying to get in touch, get back to the basics and give more? Do you uh, see that developing or how's that going? I see it developing because it's a revolving door in their own families uh-huh. and they see that values and beliefs go over and over and they come in these stores calling and asking to come in and donate their time to volunteer just to serve for the Lord. Yeah. And just watching their hearts move in that motion, it's it's wonderful to see them that young and age. Right. And it's not just young, we have the elderly ones that come in and want to help them. They're in such good spirit, they just don't have nowhere to go. Yeah. Well, that's good. It seems to be a revitalization anyhow, because we hear a lot, of course, on the mainstream news about all the doom and gloom and everything else. But I think what keeps this Hawaii and also around the country, um, you know, the spirit of giving back. There's a lot of people who are concerned, who want to do something that's worthwhile within the communities. And um, they get one recognized, and uh, many of them, like I said, of course, are not looking for recognition. But it's really heartening, like I said, to hear individuals like yourself who uh, get involved with the communities and try to, um, you know, perpetuate the spirit of uh, aloha and the alohana. Yes, there is um, one thing that I would like to see happen in the community is have more churches open up mm-hmm. and actually give those hot showers around the areas and, um, you know, participate in reaching out and we have to be stereotype when you see these people. You don't know how you're feeling until you see the thing in their eyes until they walk through the doors. Yeah. You know that they need the help. You know that they're not out there just by coincidence. They weren't put there. Mm-hmm. But um, there is a lot of help on the streets. There is a lot of help in the community. And um, us ourselves is one of them that makes the world go well. Yeah. So it's all the agencies out in the community on the island any island that can participate and um, help this homeless problem that we have here. Yeah. Well, I think that one of the things with all the people who have the giving spirit, um, and don't want to get too much into politics, and don't, you know, but really to, to, to touch on it briefly, it seems like sometimes there's certain uh, rules or regulations that's put in place that prevent people who want to really get more involved in uh, the community aspects who are prevented from doing so. But again, we don't need to you know, getting to dwell on the political part of it right now, but uh, there's something that should be addressed by our 
um, voters and uh, you know people out there who want to uh, get rid of some of these things that do hamper you know the ability for people who want to go ahead and uh, share the aloha in the app. Um, do you go to any of the other islands or travel around? I do go to the other islands. I do have family in Southern Canada. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know you, you're in a working environment. Like I say, I understand that. I appreciate that. I hear the phone ringing anyhow. Uh, okay. I think, what else would you like to, to touch on, like I say, that you think is really pertinent to our, our viewers? Uh, just that uh, we know we are all suffering in the world today, making a living, making a dollar here and there. Mm -hmm. But there's always a small chance that you can um, put yourself in that spot because you know, I could be standing in that line tomorrow yeah. without a job. Mm -hmm. Either one of us could be out there standing in the line. So just donating, even if it's your time, anything that you got to donate to these agencies that's out there help, helping out the um, elderly, uh, elderly more likely, and the children that's just suffering out there mm -hmm. on the beach, on the streets. Yeah. You know, anything that you can pull out of your pocket and, you know, give a cuckoo to me to any agency that you know that would want to help. Yeah. You know, that would be nice. That would be nice. And I, I'm not just saying that because, you know, we, we're all struggling. Yeah. You know? But when you look at the Hawaii Food Bank, if it wasn't for the Hawaii Food Bank and people like you doing what you do for the vets, you know, we can't make this world go round, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And every little bit counts. Right? Everything from above looking down. You know, we wish we were more like that, you know. Yeah. Things would be a lot better case. All right. Well, like I say, we're all in this thing together anyhow. But um, one thing I want to touch on also, again, is the, um, of course, there are a lot of elderly people who need assistance, but there are a lot of them that um, are doing pretty well. Do you get a lot of uh, volunteer uh, interest from uh, some of the more fortunate um, elderly individuals who want to share their experiences or just to, you know, to be part of um, the giving process? There's a lot of people that do come to these doors that actually came from the streets and they come back and they just want to run up their time. Mm -hmm. There's others in the community that just don't have anything to do and they come down and walk through and wonder why the line is so long out there and then they come in and find out what we do. Yeah. And then they want to help out in the community and they want to give more to what's going on around in this church in this side of the east side of town. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the things where people, we're not really, a lot of times the dots are not connected. A lot of people are not aware of what's going on around them a lot of times, you know, because I think if they were aware, we would get more interest and more um, participation, you know, in the, um, you know, in the human experience because, again, you know, like I said, we're here together. Okay. Um, is there anything that you, we, like, you'd like to touch on that we haven't touched on yet? Right now, at the moment, as about what I spoke out and said, what I shared is just that our model is just a hand up and not a hand out. Uh -huh. So, whatever you come to these stores, we make sure that you be feeling better than you were when you got here. Yeah. With a smile and a cute species. There you go. That's all, my brother. Okay. Um, is there any contact information you'd like to put out? Or Okay. Uh, is any, I'm sorry? There is contact information here at the church. Um, this is the Calvary by the Sea Lutheran Church, 5339 Kalania Highway, 96821. Mm -hmm. It's located on the Makai side of the highway in the Lutheran Church. We are here for services any Thursday or Friday. You have to call first. There are different times because we have the Ohana distribution that goes on three times a month. Right. And that starts at 12.30 to about 4. Okay. And then the days start at probably 10.30 to 2. Right. Okay. Well, Ms. Macalino, Mac, thanks a lot. Like I said, I'll be in touch, and um, we'll do what we can, of course, to try, try to get the information out about what your, the good works that, that's being um, projected out there. Thank you very much for your time, too. I really appreciate it. Folks, have a great day. Okay. Talk to you later.